Today on Rock the Park. Oh man, this is cool. We're going deep, exploring sea caves the hard way. Oh, oh man. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and plunging into water that's just a few degrees above freezing. Of Could you look down there? Not yet. Look down there. We're exploring the awesome power of nature in one of the world's largest freshwater lakes. Oh, eagle, eagle. And it all starts right now. I'm Jack Stewart. <laughs> and I'm Colton Smith. <laughs> We've been buddies for years, and we love exploring the national parks. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it, just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, there's no telling what will happen next. Get set to rock the park. They're called the Jewels of Lake Superior, islands carved out of sandstone by glaciers about 10,000 years ago. The glaciers are long gone, but wind, water, and ice are still at work fashioning some of the most dramatic seascapes you'll find anywhere on Earth. Welcome to Apostle Island's National Lakeshore, a series of windswept beaches, sandstone cliffs, and caves, and more lighthouses than any other national park in the U.S. The Apostle Islands are a cluster of 22 islands in Lake Superior off the coast of northern Wisconsin. 21 of them are part of the park along with 12 miles of mainland. Our adventure starts at the local marina in Bayfield, Wisconsin, where we'll hop on a water taxi for the 13 and a half mile trip to Stockton, the biggest island in the park. Lake Superior is the largest freshwater lake by surface area in the world. It's also the coldest and deepest of any of the Great Lakes. And it can be brutally dangerous. Huge storms create powerful deadly waves that overpower even the most massive ships, and hundreds of wrecks rest at the bottom of the lake. And we're hoping to see a couple of them, just as long as it's not this one that we're on right now. <laughs> While we're here, we're gonna do something that this place is known for, kayak, in some of the craziest sea caves in the country. <laughs> but first, we're gonna check out one of the best hikes in the park. Stockton Island is seven and a half miles long, with 14 miles of hiking trails going through all kinds of terrain. Oh, eagle. Yeah, yeah, there he is. All right. One of the things I've learned up north is you can usually count on a good bald eagle to yeah, show up. It's a northern way of life. It is. Bald eagles are plentiful around Lake Superior. Their favorite prey is fish, which they will snatch using their strong talons and keen eyesight. Thank you, sir. Yeah, watch your head. <laughs> Stockton is the most popular island in the Apostles because of its hiking trails, but it's best known for its wild inhabitants. One of the cool things about Stockton Island is there are black bears out here, and uh, we're hoping to see some. At one point, there were 31 black bears living on Stockton, but they come and go. Bears are good swimmers, so when things get a little crowded, it's not a big deal for them to move from island to island. Aside from wildlife, Stockton is world famous for another reason, and we're walking on it. This sand is it's a little more special than most. This is what we call singing sand. Only about 10% of the world's beaches have sands that sing, or in this case, squeak. In fact, I can hear it right now as I walk through it. It's kind of cool. It happens when rounded sand grains rub together. The sand here in Julian Bay is 90% quartz, which adds to the so-called concert and makes for one awesome beach. Look how gorgeous that is. Sometimes they call these parts the Caribbean of the North Woods. <laughs> and I can see how they get that. The sand dunes and pools of water are signs we've reached one of the most unique ecosystems in the park. This is called a tombolo a bridge of sand connecting what used to be two separate islands. The Tombolo supports a ton of wildlife, including coyotes, who, like the bears, will often travel between islands. Migratory birds also flock to these island getaways. It's not unusual to see great blue herons nest here. The only bloodthirsty predator you can't escape here is the mosquito. Jacket? Oh, yeah. Can't take it. Can't do it. Look at all these mosquitoes. Now, a lot of you think, probably think I'm nuts for wearing a jacket. 
when it's this warm out. Oh man, they're getting me. But I would rather brave the heat than get all these mosquito bites. It's the jacket. What's going on? Go, go. I'm going. Go. There are 54 types of mosquitoes in Wisconsin, and they're like little time bombs. They lay their eggs and just wait for the rain. When standing water hits them, they hatch. We're standing over it right now. Look at that. That's a bug breeding ground if I've ever seen one. You hear that? You smell that? And that's the smell and sounds of the North Woods. You can't beat it. One of my favorite places on Earth. It's almost a mixture of pine and the soil. And it creates this awesome scent that lets you know you're up north. You gotta embrace that. As much as we love hiking, we're anxious to trade in our hiking boots for something a little more seaworthy. Tomorrow, we'll be on the lake and underground, checking out some of the most remote sea caves you can explore in Apostle Islands. Do the limbo to get through it. I don't know if you're making it through that. Oh, man. This morning, we're breaking camp on Rocky Island, part of Apostle Island's National Lakeshore in northern Wisconsin. Today, we'll be crossing part of Lake Superior to reach one of the outermost islands in this park. We are setting off on the sea kayaks to Devil's Island, and it's about six miles. And when we get there, we're gonna be checking out some sea caves. The water in Lake Superior is cold. Even in the summertime, the average temperature hovers around 40 degrees. All right, putting her down. You gotta be careful kayaking in water this close to the freezing point. If you fall in, hypothermia sets in fast. Within 15 minutes, you can become unconscious or too exhausted to swim. Luckily, this morning, there's no wind and no waves. Beautiful water. Absolutely spectacular. The upside to freezing cold water is it's usually crystal clear because it's too cold for the plants and microscopic critters that live in most lakes. I'm sure that's like 30 feet and you can see the bottom. Keep your eyes out for big fish. Oh yeah. Oh, do you see that? Is that our island? That's our island. It's not far at all. That's not that bad. Devil's Island is at the outer edge of the park, where it gets the full force of Superior's wind and waves. Wow, dude, look at that. Even though this is a lake, technically these are sea caves, because they are created by wave action that has gouged out the stone. So one of the cool things about Devil's Island is how it got its name. When the water would come through these caves, it would just roar. Native Americans believed that it was the devil coming to the island. Here we go. Oh, man. Devil's Island is made of a unique, soft variety of sandstone, built up in thin layers over thousands of years. It's really important to check the weather forecast before you start exploring these sea caves. When the wind is up, the waves thunder and crash through here, making it too dangerous. Today's forecast is for a calm day, but at the first hint that the wind is picking up, we're out of here. This is a little narrow. Oh, man. Wow. You have to get your paddle nice and vertical. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Wow. Gee, almost feels like a cathedral, you know, yeah, with all the really colors. Does. The sandstone layers are multicolored because each one has a slightly different mix of minerals. The shades of red come from different levels of iron ore. And the water creating these caves doesn't just come from the lake. Oh, man, I'm getting rained on. <laughs> well, maybe not rain, but I'm getting wet. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> That's groundwater working its way through the sandstone from up above. Are you planning on a shower today? I wasn't planning on it, but <laughs> I'm getting one anyways. Oh, this is so incredibly cool. I was not expecting this. It's crazy how many layers there are to these caves. You come through a little passageway and it just opens up to something even bigger. These caves extend for just under a mile. None of them goes in more than a few hundred feet, but it's the opening between caverns that make it interesting. Oh, oh man, oh, oh man. Were you expecting a squeeze like this? Not really. 
Oh. 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 Oh no. You gotta tilt. You gotta tilt? Yeah, you gotta tilt your boat to get through it. Hold on. Just lean it. There we go. Yeah, there you go. There we go. We're leaning. We're leaning. Oh no. Are you stuck? No. I'm, I'm through. Watch your head. Ah. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Now that was a tight squeeze. Over time, the waves have carved passageways, leaving behind pillars and archways, some not so big. Oh, OK. Colton, we got another narrow passageway up here. Except for this one, we're going to have to lean back. Oh, my gosh. You can do the limbo to get through it. I don't know if you're making it through that. These passageways are narrow. Oh, man. But they're also short, oh. so we can back out if necessary. Oh, you got it. And we're going through one person at a time. Oh, my gosh. So oh. the other one is always free to lend a hand. Oh, oh get me through it. <laughs> Go. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost through. <laughs> I'm almost through. Ah. Yeah! I did it. So amazing. That was insane. I got to say, I wasn't expecting that at all. No, that was absolutely incredible. And it wasn't just one. We just went through like 25 different sea caves. Felt like you were underground. We got a long trek. And a big day tomorrow. It's a really big day because we're taking the plunge diving on a wreck at the bottom of Lake Superior. And while we're at it, we might just take one more look at these sea caves from a whole different perspective. It's early morning on the shores of Lake Superior. We're checking and loading gear for the most challenging adventure of our visit, exploring the Savona shipwreck at the bottom of the lake. Lucky for us, the wreck is easy to get to. It's off the shore of Sand Island and rests about 20 to 25 feet below the surface. Now, yesterday, we were floating on top of the water. Today, we're plunging in to the frigid, cold waters of Lake Superior. Diving in Lake Superior can be very tricky. We're going out with Terry Bauer, a diving expert. This orange buoy marks the Savona's resting place. The freighter sank in 1905, the victim of a sudden wicked storm. Beautiful day when they left. By the time they got here, they couldn't see anything. The weather does change quickly. It's, it's not unusual off for Lake Superior. Are there any things we should look out for down there? Anytime there's a wreck, there's always a chance you get snagged on something. So keep your gear tucked in tight. Don't go sticking your head underneath something to, to get a closer look. It's stable, but you never know what you might find. One thing we know we'll find, super cold water. Hypothermia can be deadly, so we're using wetsuits designed to slow the penetration of the water so that our body heat can warm it up a little before it reaches the skin. If you do get cold to the point where you start to shiver, give the signal that uh, you're cold and will come on up and warm you up. We have enough air in our tanks to stay down for about an hour. Oh, yeah. Woo-hoo! It's a beautiful day to dive. We got a big ship down below waiting for Did us. Did you look down there? Not yet. Look down there. This thing's massive. It's right down there. Whoa! Isn't that sick? Oh, man. Oh, oh we are right above it. Boom. There it is. You can see the giant ship just sitting there at the bottom of the lake. This thing's massive. It's going to take us a while to cover all this ground. The Savona was 375 feet long. This is where the bow broke apart from the rest of the iron hulled ship. Shows you the power of Lake Superior. It's uh, a big ship. Yeah. Just snap in half like a toothpick. A total of 20 people were on board the Savona when gale force winds blew in. The captain tried to find shelter in the Apostle Islands, but the ship ran aground and eventually broke in two. 13 crew and passengers on the rear of the ship were able to escape on lifeboats. The seven men here on the bow died in sight of the shore. They had no lifeboats, and there was no way for the others to reach them. Our plan is to start with the bow, move to the break in the ship, and then head towards the stern. 
The Savona was carrying thousands of tons of iron ore, which was salvaged soon after the wreck. But the rest of the ship, the valves, pipes, and ladder are still visible. It's almost like it's a time capsule. It went down in 1905. It's over 100 years ago. And there's a rule here in the Great Lakes that you can look but not take anything. That ensures that the next divers can see it just as you did. There is so much ground to cover, it's easy to lose all track of time, especially when your dive equipment is doing the job. Obviously, one of the very important things about diving is to make sure you have enough air. And we don't want to go up to the surface when all our air is gone. We want to make sure we've got a little safety reserve left in the tank. So after about 40 minutes, we've used up almost 80% of our air supply. Time to go up. Woo! Woo! That was awesome. Wow. What's incredible about this rack is it's so preserved in a sense. It's because of the fresh water. It kind of creates the perfect balance. The fresh water and the cold water. Yeah. It was tough to leave the Savona, but the upside is it's still early in the afternoon and Terry's got an idea. Something that most divers don't do is uh, sea caves. Normally they're kayaked, but it's, it's great below the water and above. And you said most divers don't do it? We're not most divers, yeah, Terry. Yeah, we're in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go. And we thought kayaking through these tight spots was intimidating. For a brief moment, I think, my worst fear is about to come true. The sea caves at Apostle Island's National Lakeshore are spectacular in all seasons. In the wintertime, visitors can explore them along the mainland, where crazy icicles create a frosted wonderland. In the summer, a lot of visitors see them from a distance by boat. The more adventurous get up close in kayaks. We're taking the adventure to a whole new level. From down below, you can see even better how these caves have been shaped by the relentless power of Lake Superior. All of these rocks were once a part of the island. Colton tells me he wants to try to swim through this little crack. And I know we can make it, but it's a little intimidating at first. Sometimes you forget how big this giant aluminum tank is on your back. I was able to squeeze through, make it to the other side. If he can clear it, I can clear it. <laughs> so I swim up behind him and it was awesome. These caves are near the surface, open to the lake in about eight feet of water. So we can safely look around. So Colt and I are exploring and I look over and I just see pure black. This intrigues me. So we start to swim towards it and it gets a little creepy, but I don't care if you're hiking, if you're kayaking, or if you're scuba diving, going into a big black pit that you can't see where you're going, it's a little unsettling. And it just keeps getting darker and darker. So after a while, I think I better pop my head up and see what's going on. We ascend to the surface and all of a sudden we're in this massive room with these little cracks of light coming through. It's one of the most spectacular sights I've seen on this trip. That's been the story of our visit to this park, plunging into the unfamiliar and making amazing discoveries that we could easily miss if we didn't push our limits. Man, that was awesome. That's the way to end the trip. Holy cow, this place has got it all. It really does. What was incredible is we got to hike through the woods then go on kayaks to sea caves just like this, and then to be able to end it by diving underneath. And not to mention getting to dive to a shipwreck. A shipwreck that was gigantic. Lake Superior can be the most serene, peaceful place on Earth, or it can be dangerous and ferocious. I'm glad that we got to see the peaceful side while we were here. The Apostle Islands are perfect for exploring the awesome power and beauty of nature. And remember, hey, if we could do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, get out there and rock the park.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.